Hey, I want to share with you another biography, and I hope that it'll be a blessing to you. You know, we're having a lot of people read these things. I was surprised. I thought, boy, on the, on the wild side, maybe 15 of you all would look at these, but we're having 1,500 people look at these. Uh, and I hope that you're spending some time in prayer for these brothers and after you hear that their needs and what they're doing for the Lord. This is a brother named uh, Arugula. Oh my goodness, like the like the salad, I guess. Arugula. Arugalu. Maybe it'd be a better way of pronouncing it. Um, his ID number is 2750. And I'm going to share not just his testimony, but his wife's testimony also. So we might be a few minutes longer than normal. So let me get into it. He says, I'm an independent pastor in Andhra Pradesh, India. My father and my forefathers worshipped idols and used to sell the images of gods that they made uh, with their own hands. I never cared for this. Uh, my father also sold the images by going door to door as a salesman. After finishing the eighth grade, I learned to drive a car. I got a license and started my career as a taxi driver. One day, a church pastor engaged my taxi on a rental basis. When we were on a journey, a lady came and requested the pastor to pray for her son who suffered with fever. He prayed, and we continued on our journey. In the evening, the pastor stopped our taxi at the woman's house again, and to my surprise, the woman told us that that day her son was healed by the pastor's prayer. This made me think about the healer. The next day, I went and talked to the boy with the pastor and came to know about Jesus Christ and how he is the son of the living God. That he came to the world to remove all the sins of the world. The pastor told me that it was Jesus who had healed the boy, not him. From that day, I made friends with this pastor. And even though my family members and my wife objected, I came to know more about Jesus and realized my sinful state. And finally, I accepted Jesus as my savior. I began to pray for Jesus to open doors to preach the gospel of salvation to others. You notice he didn't begin to pray for healing or miracles. Once he caught the real thing, he wanted to be able to give it to other people. And that the real thing, healing's temporary, you're still going to die. But salvation is eternal. He said, at last my prayers were answered and God directed me to a remote village. And I was the first man to preach to them about Jesus. After much prayer, the people began to believe in the Lord. Prayer is the cause of the increase in our church ministry. He says, now everybody honors my words and Jesus is praised in all respects. All our church members are poor laborers. Please pray for them. He says, uh, since that time, he has won 396 people to Christ, baptized 198, so right at 50%. Uh, he's evangelized 26 villages, and he has started 10 churches. That means each of these churches are being led now by a pastor whom he led to Christ and trained for the ministry, just as he was trained for the ministry. He says also uh, that he's working as a pastor and evangelist, going from door to door and proclaiming about Jesus, the Savior of the world. He says most of our, most of our people are poor and uneducated, and people of other religions generally who hate Christians. Unless God moves in the hearts of these people, they will not believe in Jesus. Uh, you can understand the strain in convincing the people. So he's asking for your prayer. And I said I was going to read you a testimony from his wife, but excuse me, that's the next one that you'll get next week. So I hope you'll remember to pray for this brother. Name Again, his name is Arugulu, number 2750. Follow the link at the end of the video and see how you can pray more for him, learn more about him, and maybe help him if God enables you to do so. Thanks. See you next time.